Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Mark Holland, the health minister for the Liberal Party, went on the Vasquez show and basically whined and complained that, you know, Canada wanting an election right now isn't good for his timetable. And he doesn't approve that it's the way that we should be doing things, despite the fact that he got elected on a two year election. There was an election in 2019, an election in 2021 that didn't seem to bother him and it doesn't seem to be crossing into his radar now that he thinks Canadians have turned against him now that the population supports a different party. All of a sudden he says, no, 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 we're not, we can't do that kind of thing. And I'm wondering if you can concede that other parties might actually want to go to an election because they feel that you actually aren't aren't doing stuff or getting stuff done for Canadians. And, and there's going to be a time for that. Like, let's not forget, we're in a democracy. <laughs> Elections are happening. My argument would be that they should happen every four years. Well, it's not convenient that all of a sudden he feels that it should be four years. It doesn't matter what Canadian people want. It only matters what MP Holland wants. But ultimately, that agreement now no longer exists. Sure. And they did, Canadians did elect a minority government. They didn't elect you to a majority government. And when you point to 2021 and the things that they wanted fixed, a lot has happened in the interim in which they might feel, and polling bears this out, quite a bit worse about the circumstances that surround them and the lot that they face in life, the affordability crisis, a whole bunch of things. Even under your portfolio, the fact that they don't have a family doctor. Many more Canadians don't have a family doctor now than they did back in 2021. Again, isn't it understandable that they would want at this point in time the opportunity to see a change in government and see that new set of circumstances better addressed? And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Under this guy's logic, you should never get a divorce, right? You would never be permitted to get a divorce because, you know, the contract is for life. I mean, the guy is just desperately clinging to power. He's been he's been an MP for 20 years, 20 years. So I imagine that he's uh, quite used to getting his own way when it comes to these kinds of things. And I suppose everybody in his region likes the, the way that he talks. Maybe they like his little bow ties. However, the state of the health care in this country is so terrible. I mean, I, I, I don't see why we should be worrying about braces and um, birth control when we have people that are going, you know, years without seeing a doctor. Imagine that. Imagine the fact that you might be sick and you can't see a doctor because the liberals have sent all of our money to different projects like Zelensky or, you know, the Green Slush Fund. I mean, he opened pretty smugly. He opened pretty uh, like he was going to come in there and control the situation and try to make it seem like, you know, gaslight you into believing that he had a right to decide when there would be an election called. Then as he, as the... Um, interview moves along he starts to become more and more agitated because Vassie a completely and utterly dismantles every argument that he makes and b doesn't let him push her around you say that we have them every four years so that you can det detach yourself from the ups and downs of the world and you can fairly evaluate whether or not a government delivered there's but going to be an what if they election. just don't think your solutions are the right ones well, and that they an feel election. that because they'll have an election but they could have one right i don't understand but, but what's we, so inherently wrong about wanting one sooner rather than later I, I guess i have an instinct and certainly it was reinforced by what happened in 2021 the canadians want a parliament that functions and works canadian want solutions to their problems but and you're the creator of those problems so you need to step out of the way if everything that you say if, if you believe every word that's coming out of your mouth you should be happy to get out of the way you should be willing to have an election because it's what the canadian people want instead of desperately clinging to some power like a like a dictator in venezuela or argentina or wherever it was that election got rigged instead of desperately holding on instead of just saying to yourself you know what you're right over 60% of Canadians do not have a, a family doctor, and here I am pushing dentists. Like, I should be more worried about making sure that people have doctors and, you know, we can get the dentists worked out as we go. But you're not doing any of that. You're just telling yourself that you're doing wonderful, and anybody that complains against you is some sort of conspiracy theorist. But you know what? Every cons Most conspiracies end up, start with a kernel of truth, right? So the people are unhappy with the way that you're behaving, and it's time that you get out of the way. I mean, that's the reality of the situation on the ground. If you can't handle that, if you can't understand that, then you're not the person that you claim to be. Now we'll come around to the, the you know, the we're into the greatest hits of the Liberal Party and their desperation. So now all of a sudden they think that the Liberals, or the, excuse me, the Conservatives should just throw every idea that they have, every solution that they have, because the last five times that they offered a solution, the Liberals didn't exactly take that and run and not give the Conservatives any credit for it. 
and on what terms. But that's they the way have. our system works. If no, ultimately, it doesn't. no, no, the conservatives don't. We have no, to work with other parties. No, but ultimately, if the conservatives find other people to work with them to defeat your government, that is the way that yeah, but they just the moved system to works. Here's and just, how just to be fair to them, they moved to non-confidence votes yesterday. Yeah. Then they're moving another one today. But you're, you're providing them with that awesome. opportunity to do it. That's, no, we are provided I mean, with an opposition day motion, and you know what you could do with an opposition day motion, Bash? And they have in the past. You could present an idea how to improve. Okay, they have in the past. I mean, liberals also. I remember covering a minority parliament in which liberals were also working to defeat Stephen Harper's government at any opportunity that. That's what opposition parties do. And I just want to get back to, he said the other day in the House of Commons during that non-confidence motion that he would, you know, he would hope to take money from one place and increase health care transfers to, to provinces, increase health care spending in another degree. I'm just saying. And I think that really one of the biggest problems with the Liberal government is that they keep just trying to blame everybody and divide everybody instead of just getting down to fixing the problems that they've caused. And because they're not fixing the problems, that means that they have no solutions. This country is in desperate need of, of doctors. We are in need of houses. We are in need of things that the government doesn't seem to care about. They seem to be obsessed with the GDP. They seem to be obsessed about making sure the single mothers go to work. They don't seem to be obsessed with making sure that we hire doctors or that we find some way to educate doctors and then we hold them to an arrangement where they have to work inside of this country. We don't seem to be pushing any money into uh, nurse practitioners. These are not the people that they claim to be and they're just desperately clinging on to power and Vassy shuts them down yet again. And, you know, it's obvious that they're going to get shut down because they're not being honest it's easy to shut down somebody who's being dishonest that's the thing of it right that's the part that he doesn't want to understand that's the part that he doesn't want to admit to when you're not being straightforward it's difficult to keep track of your story but when you're being straightforward like when you're shooting from the hip as any most honest people will know there's no holes to poke right does your party have respect for the voters? You've, you've spent a long time here telling us how Canada is great and good and, you know, there are ills in the rest of the world, that all incumbent governments are facing. I've heard this consistently from yourself, from other ministers, from the prime minister on Stephen Colbert who said, yeah, Canadians are frustrated and they're taking it out on me. Why is there no line of culpability whatsoever? You promised in your portfolio specifically in 2019, not you, but your predecessor, that every Canadian, the Liberals would fill a promise where every Canadian gets a family doctor. And instead, there were 14% of Canadians who didn't have one in that year, and there are 20, more than 20% now that do. It's not always everybody else's fault. I take your points on the criticism of Parliament, that. but yeah, that's, that's, that. what, that's what in you and fairness, your colleagues are in fairness, in fairness, no, that's not true. That's just factually not true. And I'll tell you exactly why it's, it's not true. It's bad everywhere else. Is that, what that, no, what I've said is, is that it's bad everywhere else. So he did say it's bad everywhere else, despite just saying no, that he didn't say that. That's weird. And, you know, the, it, he said it right in this interview. And they're always saying that, right? It's not, they don't care what's going on in Canada. They're obsessed with what's happening in the United States. They're obsessed with what's happening in the Ukraine. They're obsessed with what's happening in the G7. They have, they just are always looking somewhere else instead of solving the problems that they've caused. And the reason that they have to do that, of course, is obvious, right? Because they, they're not capable. They're not qualified to fix it. And when she asked him, do you think that, do you have respect for the Canadian voter? I don't think they do. I believe that the answer to that is no. I don't think they respect Canadians at all in any way, shape or form. If they did, would they insult our intelligence so often? No, we're not going to get there overnight. You can't snap your fingers and you should be afraid of anybody who says you're going to. It requires slow, methodical, inch by inch work to make progress happen. And that's what we're doing. And I understand it's never fast enough. I, 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 I've been devoted here for my nine entire- years. In nine years. You think that it's time that maybe you just step out of the way. That's the other thing, right? They'll say to you that everything was destroyed in COVID overnight. And yet now they want to make you believe that they don't have enough time on their plate. Now the other tired trope, right? That it's not that you you know your life is a disaster because you could, you can get up and look around. It's somehow that the conservatives are brainwashing you. And I'm saying and yet that what they're we're offering 20 is, points ahead of you yeah, and have been for eight months. Of course, because they're, we're on track to meet our targets. This stuff is huge. Mm-hmm. This the is Canadian stuff that Climate Institute did before. not say that. They but said I, you need but to I would say to you that, that... Of course, we're not on tar- track to meet our targets for the environment because the fact the truth is, is that you haven't offered any solutions to the environmental problems. You've just said that we have to pay you money. And I'd really love to know where that money is going because everywhere I look, we're broken, 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 broke. And there's no, no economy in the world that can thrive on debt. Not ever, not ever. So I don't understand why this guy is up here trying to tell you that the environment is the reason that the health minister is doing a great job. 
but he invited it in and you can see that he's just become more and more agitated more and more cross because he's not used to getting con confronted right he's not used to being told that he his what he's saying doesn't make any sense and when put under the microscope when put under scrutiny just like all of the liberal policies just like all of the ndp policies they don't survive the the light of fact checking they simply fall to shreds they they fall to pieces in 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 a glance and what Isn't has to be done to make it better? for your party maybe people really feel that way Bashi, I don't know if you encounter this in your life. I encounter it all the time. There are people who complain and say things are broken, and there are people who try to actually make the world better and do things. Because it's very easy to complain, very easy to say what's broken. But if you want to get the opportunity to go and make change and do something different, you have to show how you're going to fight for every inch of progress, what you're going to do every morning, what kind of character you have to do it. That's a question that I welcome. But I welcome it at a time when we have a normal election. In my opinion, having an election because the Conservatives won an election isn't a good reason for I love how he said how he complained that people shouldn't complain how he's been complaining the whole uh, interview which was quite long for the CTV show power play that the conservatives won an election but the conservatives are not see the one problem with the left is that they don't listen right they don't care if you don't agree with them they, they tune you right out they block you on the they don't listen to what you have to say and the conservatives don't do that, right? So the conservatives know what the temperature of the country is. They know that people won an election. They know that people want that. And we all were very disappointed when the Bloc Québécois decided to just collectively, you know, get think of themselves and just throw, throw the rest of us into more of nightmare of this liberal party. And the fact that this guy's trying to say to himself that he's owed, owed that extra year is just like the, the guy who says to the wife, no, you're not allowed to divorce me because we said that we wouldn't get divorced. It's just like the guy who says, well, you have to give, you know, I might have screwed everything up, but you can't fire me because I'm under contract. The idea that we have to do it because Mark Holland says so, the man who's desperately clinging to power, the man who, who despite the fact that only 20%, as Vassy said, 20% of Canadians have a doctor, he's telling you that it's okay because we're giving dentures to seniors. And it's okay because we're giving daycare to sing to um, babies, right? We're not finding out ways for mothers to stay home with their child. We're not finding ways to educate doctors. We're not finding ways to get do to invite doctors into Canada. No, we're not doing any of that. We don't need all that. Anybody who says that you need that's a conspiracy theorist, don't you know? That anybody who says that you need that's just not listening to the far left, and they are you know troublemakers. This is the kind of people that are running this country. I swear I said it. I say it again, and I'll say it. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I do not understand who votes for these guys. I really do not. Like they clearly vote, cast a vote based solely and completely on political party instead of on the character or the caliber of the human being. Because though I will admit that this guy talks real fast and he tries to talk like he knows what he's talking about, and he tries real hard to bully Vasi Capellas, who, to her credit, is clearly much stronger than he is. In the, in the end, he doesn't say anything of any substance except it's not his fault, except it's somebody else's fault, except he has to he, he needs to be given more time and he needs doesn't care what you're going through. He just wants more time. He wants more. It's all about him, 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 him. All right, I'm gonna wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.